Hey guys, welcome back. Uh, time to get some cylinder heads built for X231's engine. And I've got two sets of heads on the bench here. I'll give you a little backstory as to why. Uh, unfortunately, the original 10X prototype cylinder heads from X231's engine are long gone. They were, they were replaced many years ago by this set of heads right here, which actually are production 445 10A5854 high compression heads. How these high compression cylinder heads made their way onto that engine, I'll never know. Um, but since the original 10X heads are long gone, whatever cylinder heads I do end up using on it aren't going to be original anyway. So I decided for what we're building this engine to do, the high compression cylinder heads just really weren't needed. So I was able to source a set of standard compression 445 cylinder heads. These, these are the 10A5851s that I think would be a much better match for that engine. So these are the ones we're going to go with. Um, we did have the machine shop reconditioned these a bit. They checked them for cracks, made sure that everything was good there, and they renewed the head gasket surfaces as well. All I've done so far is to put the new core plugs in, and I've got all eight valve guides pressed in. So just to do a quick comparison between, these are the standard compression 5851s. These are the high compression 5854s that were on it. And you can see there's quite a smaller combustion chamber on the high compression heads versus the standard ones. So I think these are just going to be a much better match for this engine. Um, the valve seats have not been reconditioned yet. Uh, we're going to do that here and I'm going to get into that next. So to start this process, I took all the new intake and exhaust valves out of the packages and just checked them on my face grinder to make sure they had a good 45 degree angle. Um, usually brand new valves are pretty good out of the package, but a couple of these were a little weight, a little bit off and I was able to get everything dressed and get them all uniform, so it's good there. When the machine shop was going through the heads, they had found that at one point this exhaust valve seat had been ground really deep, so much so that it was better for them just to put a new insert in to bring this one back up so that I wouldn't have to grind quite so much material out of the rest of these to get all my valve recession back to being uh, pretty much the same again. So this is a hardened seat. I'm going to need my Stellite stones to cut it. So the, the next thing I'm going to do here is to, just to start doing the 45 degree angle on the seat, get this one cut down pretty close to where the rest of these are, and then I can start dressing everything and making them all uniform after that. Okay, I think I'm getting pretty close to having the initial 45 degree um, angle done on this seat insert here. Started with uh, all the exhaust valves because this one is going to be the most amount of work out of any of them. So um, while I was at it, I <clears throat> retouched the seats on the other three exhaust valves and I was able to get the recession all even am amongst them. So now what I'm going to do is just uh, test fit the valve in here. I'll get the depth mic. And we'll just do a quick check against the valve kind of see where we are okay we're looking pretty good for recession depth on all four exhaust valves so the initial 45 degree is done on the difficult one next I'm gonna to have to do a 30 degree around the outer perimeter and then a, a sharper 60 around the inside to narrow up the seat and also get it positioned on the face of the valve if you're watching this video you probably are familiar with this process already um, in case there's anybody Viewing this that isn't, I'll do a brief description of it here real quick. Okay, just a little bit of a visual aid here. Um, we have the valve illustrated here and a cross section of the cylinder head. So, and just to get a little better idea of what's going on, that's valve open, that would be valve closed. So that's what we have happening right here. Now this is where I am with the exhaust valves on these cylinder heads right now. I've made sure the exhaust valves and the intake valves all have a good 45 degree angle on the face. And I've cut a fresh 45 degree angle on all four of the exhaust valve seats up to this point. Um, even more so on the new insert that was put in because I had to grind that insert in so far to get the valve recession the same as the rest of them, I ended up with a very wide 45 degree angle seat on that insert, at least as wide as what the face of the valve is, if not wider. So the next step is going to be uh, doing the 30 degree cut to start narrowing that seat a little bit and bringing the contact area on the valve more into where I want it. So here's just a simple sketch of that next 30 degree cut that I'm going to make. 
it's going to happen on the outer perimeter of the uh, the first 45 that I did. You can see the 45 degree line is still present, but the 30 degree cut is basically just going to go and add an additional step to that surface area, to that old seat area, before it transitions back to the zero degree um, horizontal surface. And what that's going to do, it's going to start narrowing up that old 45 degree seat and it's going to start bringing the contact area on the valve face down from the outer perimeter and more into the middle of it or the upper, upper two-thirds portion where I'd like it to be. So that new contact area is going to end about where I have the dotted line marked right through there. So after I finish with the 30 degree cuts and I've got the upper edge of the contact patterns uh, established on all the valve seats, I'll do a sharper 60 degree cut on the inner diameter of that old 45, which will further narrow the 45 degree seat um, and bring the contact pattern up from the base of the valve face and I can get a, a better, more narrower defined um, seat contact area through the, the face of the valve positioned exactly on the face where I want it. So um, this manual calls for a 3 30 seconds wide valve seat contact area on the valve. Um, you can of course adjust the width of the contact area by grinding uh, heavier with the 30 degree or with the 60 degree angles to bring it down from the top or to bring it up from the bottom. You can um, do equal amounts on each side of the 45 to narrow it up or not grind quite so much on each side of the 45 to keep it wide. Or if you maybe get it too narrow, you can cut more 45 into it and kind of bring it back and widen it out again. Um, this is just a very simple three angle seat. There's a lot more I could get into with setting valve seats um, for getting contact, the contact pattern in different areas of the valve and the reasons for it, but it really doesn't have anything to do with what I'm doing with this one. So hopefully that's just a, a brief little uh, explanation of the next few things I'm going to be doing here. So here are all four exhaust valve seats set up to the new valves. I did the 45 degree, 30 degree, and 60 degree cuts on each one as I had explained and I got the seats narrowed up to spec and I got them positioned on the valve faces where I like them. And to determine where the contact patterns are I just take a piece of chalk, put a few hash marks around the face of the valve, stick the valve onto the seat, spin it a couple times and then you can really see where all the contact is and where your seat rides. So um, pretty simple process really. I just have to repeat it now for all four intake valves. I'll start with the 45 degree stone and I'll get all the valves set down in the into the heads about the same distance and I'll use the 30 and the 60 to uh, trim the seats from there. Okay, so with that, the seats are all done. I've brought everything back to spec, and I've got the contact pattern back in where I like to uh, where I like to see it on the faces of the valves. So, next step is going to be putting the valves uh, into the cylinder heads. But first, I'm going to have to uh, do a pretty good cleaning on these. They're full of that abrasive grit that comes off those stones and gets blasted all over uh, in everything. So, I'm going to have to be sure to get every last bit of that out before I start any final assembly on these heads. So that's as far as I'm gonna go for now with this video. I'll get these things cleaned and then we'll pick right back up um, where I left off with uh, getting the valves fully assembled in the head and hopefully getting these put back on the engine. So guys, as always, thanks for watching. Like and subscribe and I hope to see you back next time.